I see architecture as a, um, a very um, broad but also very focused profession because um, on one hand it, it, it the focus for me to be an architect is to be able to envision holistically and that's why all all those different subjects which were interesting to me uh, have shaped me and I continue to take interest in so many things from economy anthropology I look at I, I like to be updated with the latest findings because I think the human we are not designing for a static human but humans in my opinion uh, uh, or in my let's say understanding of our role as architects we are here to serve and create the habitat for the evolving human being so we are changing so our past uh, ways of organizing our life don't suffice and we have we are many more humans so i think i like to see our see our role as um, very very important because we architecture is is a is a tool to be able to synthesize many many professional or many many different aspects of human settlements and human society so on one hand if you have a broader knowledge you can have a wider vision but you also can if you combine um, artistic knowledge with technical knowledge and knowledge of the um, the arts and the you know the the history and the geography and to understand where is society going you can project a future and a, a vision and then you may have the skills to manifest it i think um, so i think in that sense i continue to be very interested i read uh, not only architecture books most uh, buildings are aimed at daylighting so I can't single out any because I it's something very basic for us. Um, I would just say that for me it has been more about combining day, the, the window designs and lighting design with ventilation design because from the point of view of ventilation the climate gives us solar conditions for lighting but it also gives us a heating impact of the solar conditions. So either you have to heat or cool your building or if you are in a humid area, you need a cross ventilation if you want to do it natural. So I think combining how human habitat responds to climate and geography. My challenge has always been to find the very interesting uh, difference in the requirement from the point of view of lighting and the point of view of climatic comfort um, through an optimum or, or a minimum interference to have that thermal comfort through using the way we orient ourselves to nature so so it's very it is much simpler if you have to only calculate your lighting and achieve it but if you have to also make sure that in in the monsoon season um, you need a different ventilation than in a hot summer and winter so how do you negotiate the changing temporal uh, aspect of climate with the changing daily need for lighting so this is a challenge and is unique according to where we apply it and that's where i think my research has been focused In the green agenda, I feel people are overly measuring the things that are easier to measure and the harder to measure aspects are completely being left out from the checklist. So I think, you know, things like, you know, uh, the need for a view for your well-being to orient whether your what's going on outside and how the day is changing. Uh, these kind of psychological needs and even biological needs of light for your health and happiness and well-being I think are harder like see beauty is hard to measure but we know that we would suffer if it's ugly so so I feel a lot of very factual rational parameters have made their way into the green building 
guidelines even in terms of materiality i find but the qualitative aspects are not uh, easy to do and so they are not in the list so it's quite dangerous that we just check some boxes and we think we have achieved it but may, we may have forgotten the central issues so uh, i i used to you know I, a quote comes to mind you know what is the point of doing efficiently those things which should not be done at all this is a question you can get a easily uh, if you check the various boxes you could get a nice green building but the whole thing may not be green or maybe the whole building should have not been avoided by using something else so humans have started pigeonholing their, themselves and as as architects or as holistic thinkers we need to make sure that the things which are so essential to the soul but they they are not easy to put a number and figure to not leave them out totally 